So today I'm taking a look at a watch that really caught my eye on the internet. It is this uh, San Martin, basically Tudor Pelagos knockoff type situation. Uh, and although I'm not usually the biggest fan of homages or kind of something like this, which is almost a super copy in a sense, it kind of is the watch Tudor should make. So let's get into it. So we have a diameter of about 39, lug to lug of 47, height of about 12.8, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for this watch, we're gonna have the Seiko NH35 movement beating away in here, just through a regular closed case back. We do have a sapphire crystal on the front with an AR coating. They don't state whether it's on the inside or the outside, but it exists somewhere. We do have a 120 click matte ceramic bezel, which actually has BGW9 loom infilled. We also have BGW9 loom on the actual face of the watch for the hands and indices. We have 300 meters of state of water resistance with a screw down crown. Uh, and last but not least, the watch retails from Watch Dives, because it's a Watch Dive San Martin collaboration, for $238. So starting off with the dial of this watch, and it is fantastically done. It is obviously the Pelagos dial done on the San Martin, but they do it not only faithfully, uh, but they do it to a pretty nice standard. We have the classic snowflake handset, of course, painted over in this kind of white paint situation. Uh, and then you have the slight amount of blue towards the very middle of the hand stack. Square markers for uh, most of the hours, rectangles at three, six, nine, and a triangle at 12. All ties in very well, very harmonious design. I like the way the snowflake pairs with the rest of the square markers. I don't like how Tudor tends to do the uh, like you know, black base style with the circular markers. To me, this more squared off handset works better with the squared off markers. I like that they kept the text very minimal here. I probably would have preferred San Martin to be just written out as San Martin rather than this you know, interesting quote unquote logo that they decided to go for. I don't love it, but I also don't mind it either. I think for the price point, it's forgivable. Looking at the dial, just like on the watch it's inspired by, we have this, uh, I guess you can say stepped section into this Reha. Uh, it just has this very interesting look to it. Uh, the markers actually sit inside, inset into that little chapter ring area. And to me, it adds a beautiful amount of depth. It ends up making the watch dial feel very structural and just really draws your eye in. Much more interesting than a pure flat dial with just markers rising above the dial. It just, it, it feels more put together, feels more premium, uh, and just in a sense more thought out. Matte blue dial, color matched perfectly on this little bezel reha area. Uh, and then depending on the angle, you might be able to see it here. The bezel is a little bit mismatched in color from the dial. It's not perfect, whereas on the Pelagos, you do get a pretty much perfect color match. A little harder to do, especially at this price point, I assume, but in most lighting is it's pretty close. And honestly, even me, who's a very big stickler for color matching and color tones being very uh, at harmony with each other, this is 99% of the time there. and. Most of the time, I don't mind even when it looks off. Taking a look at the watch in natural light, you can see the blue tone becomes very uniform, very uh, deep and darker in the shade. But once you get to the sunlight, that color mismatch comes out a little bit more and the dial becomes a little bit darker at certain off angles. But to me, it still looks really great in that sun. That nice matte coloration to the dial and matte coloration to the bezel really complement the watch. And they did a good job. It doesn't look cheap in direct sunlight, which is usually the hardest part for a watch. Taking a closer look at the dial, this is where the price point starts showing a little bit, but even then, for what you're getting for the price, I think it's still fairly acceptable. Looking around, you can see the dial has this almost pebbly type color tone about it. Very interesting. I think that helps with the kind of matte effect you get from the dial surface. So nothing to complain about. It's not really a texture or a color differential you really see from wrist. Looking at the actual text, you can see it actually is printed pretty nicely. It has a three-dimensional quality to it. It's not just flatly printed and it has a good amount of life to it. It also is printed well. There's no misprints. Uh, same goes for the text down here. So they did a really nice job there. Looking at the actual markers, you can start to see, you know, there's little splotches taken out. They aren't fully uh, done to the way you would expect them to be. Uh, but to be fair, some of them are pretty clean, like this one here this one here. So every now and then we're getting some of these little QC issues, uh, especially if you look at the handset, obviously the loom, there's like little splotches taken out. Uh, but even uh, with those tiny little issues in mind, it actually is fairly clean for what you're getting. Of course, a little dot there on the hour hand, this little like weird yellowish bit on the hour hand as well. Tiny little mark there towards the end of the seconds hand. Of course, this is all stuff you can't see from wrist view. And keeping in mind that this watch is coming at a price point around $200, this is still a fantastically done dial. 
uh, with all the elements that come together, especially the way that this little ring is done here, uh, especially the fact that it has two different finishings on it, that kind of finishing that matches the base dial texture, and this one that holds the seconds markers and just uh, is a little bit darker contrasts well and you know kind of helps with legibility in a sense. Something that does surprise me is how well the transition is from this blue to white, we'll just call it paint. Uh, that to me it looks really nice, it's well done, it doesn't have any jagged edge or look unclean or unkempt in any way. Uh, I've seen worse on more expensive watches, so it's nice to see it done to such a high standard here. And to be fair, it makes it a lot more premium than you would expect at this price. So moving on to the case of this watch, and it's fairly well done, it's classic Rolex Tudor style case. It's a oyster case reminiscent, pretty thin mid case, it really hides the thickness of the NH movement very well. You can kind of see that the case back bumps out a little bit from the back of the case, but realistically that wears into the wrist, so you don't feel any of that height. It wears much thinner than you would expect it to. Focusing on the finishing for a second, we do have vertical brushing on the top side of the case with this polished chamfer that follows and explodes into the crown area and the crown guard top is completely high polished, which is a little odd to see. Uh, Vertical brushing, of course, on the links, uh, polish on the sides, but there is no like chamfer that follows into the polish. Horizontal brushing on the case sides with a nice signed crown. And a classic coin edge bezel here, which is done really well. It has an action that is, you know, scarily similar to how the Tudor Pelagos is. Not quite the same t tone to it because it's not uh, titanium, but as it stands, uh, pretty good action, no back play at all, which I'm pretty surprised by. And at the end of the day, it's nice because it actually does line up perfectly. So the QC is good here. We do get screw links in the bracelet, which is cool. Uh, nice little San Martin relief in the clasp here, just a fold over clasp, nothing crazy. But what is really nice is the fact that we have on the fly adjustment, which you can kind of see in there. You push this down and it pops the link out. I'm already all the way out. But what's really nice is it just ratchets in. You don't have to push the button again to put it in or anything like that. So in theory, at some points, you could actually push it in while it's still on the wrist. You don't have to take it off, but you do have to take it off if you want to make it looser. So you push down, pull out, and you get some nice extension there. So awesome to see at this price point, awesome to see it just included in the first place, uh, and pretty good execution of it. I've seen other executions of quick releases that aren't as functional, don't feel as smooth and sturdy as this one does. Pretty insane. And really good on San Martin for that. I don't know if they've you know stolen some kind of patented design or whatnot, but, but even then it, you know, it works well. Looking at the case back, nothing crazy. They went with, you know, this is a classic Tudor style watch, so we're gonna make a sterile case back. You know, whatever, I don't care. It looks good, doesn't, uh, I don't need any frills on my case back. I'm not looking at it too often. So uh, the cleaner, the simpler, the better. I do like that they went with a just kind of almost faithful recreation of that Tudor case. They didn't try to make the proportions any weirder or any odder or any bulkier in a sense to make it their own. They just kept what works. And I like that because this is done perfectly. The proportions are great. Again, the thickness is really nice. The case shape is beautiful. So you're getting 99% of the way there, really. Even the finishing is done amazingly well. This brushing is really fine. It seems very premium. The transition between the brush and the polish, it is all feeling of a quality much higher than the $200 price point. I've, I haven't seen a $200 watch that feels and looks quite like this. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing this 41 millimeter diver, so this will give you a nice comparison. And here we have the Sam Martin sitting on my six and a half inch wrist. One thing I didn't notice, the crown action is actually really nice on it. It screws in really well, screws out very nicely. Uh, it's pretty smooth. The winding action to the movement isn't grainy, so they didn't just use a very, very cheap, uh, you know, bottom of the barrel, say NH35 stock or anything like that. They went with a fairly, seemingly will be reliable movement looks perfect it wears well it's a great size it sits very close to the wrist because it is at this more affordable price point with the machining of the watch they kind of went a little uh you know that's where they cut the corners it's a little sharp in some areas especially here at the clasp and on the edges of the links so unfortunately just the way this watch fits me even with that micro adjust i have to wear it a little bit tighter because if i wear it any looser it really bangs into the back of my wrist and it's just not comfortable at least for like how i would like to wear my watches so at this tighter setting of how I'm wearing it now, every once in a while I do get a digging from the clasp, I do feel the edges of the bracelet, and it's just a little bit sharper and a little bit, you know, of a quality you'd expect at this price point. And this is one of the first times it really does show its price point. But it, if you're okay with that, it's totally livable. It, it's not something that hurts or 
takes away from the experience that much. It's just there. Looking at it from the side view, you can see the watch basically just sits into my wrist there. It doesn't really rise up tall at all. So you're getting a relatively thin profile for a thicker watch with 300 meters of water resistance. Now, am I gonna stake my life on that 300 meters of water resistance? Maybe not, uh, <laughs> but they claim it's there and you have a screw down crown. So I'm sure it can at least take the pool, take the ocean, uh, and you'll most likely be fine. It's just nice to see it in such a svelte package, such a really well executed, you know, watch all around to be fair. Even the bracelet integrates very nicely because it's not too thick, it feels just right, it has the right amount of heft to it. And even with the clasp having that micro adjust system, they didn't go overboard on the size. So there's a lot of refinement here that's surprising to see at this price point. But again, things like this little bit of sharpness around the bracelet uh, or how the micro adjust probably would need a little bit extra couple notches of setting for me to get the perfect fit showcase that there were some slight corners cut. And something I just noticed during this review and something I'll zoom in on in a second is this is another area where the you know, watch is showing its price point. The finishing is done fairly well. It's, it looks really premium. It's very fine brushing. It doesn't look like cheap machine finishing. It looks pretty high quality. But right here at the edge where this brush finishing is meeting this uh, polished chamfer, there's like a missing of the brushing or an overdone of the polishing side. So. That's something you would probably never see on a more expensive watch or on a Tudor uh, you know, of this similar design, uh, but it is here. But again, at the price point, I think it's forgiven. And there we go, that's just a quick zoom in there. You can see that there is brushing, but the polishing just took over a little bit, or in theory, the whole entire case was brushed, uh, and they, or sorry, the whole entire case was polished first, and they just missed that part in the brushing process. So a little strange, I've never seen that before at any watch of any price point realistically. So just technically a QC issue that exists and to be fair, I haven't noticed it and I probably will not notice it that much going forward in the wearing experience. So uh, it's there, but it's not a huge deal. So moving on to some other straps and I'll just start off with my favorite because why not? We're having some fun today. And this is of course the classic white arch of silicone strap, pairs with this watch perfectly. Of course, at times you're gonna notice that the white starkness of this like painted indice hand situation for the watch doesn't match perfectly with the BGW9 lumen fill. It makes the BGW9 look a little bit yellower. And to me, this white strap exacerbates that in some lighting situations, but in natural light, basically just all looks white. The color blends together really well, so it's not a big issue. Here we have the watch on wrist. You can just see the white pairs perfectly, makes it very summery. The watch just pop, very colorful. And when you bring it to the side view, again, just plants the watch so well. It's so thin uh, and super comfortable. When it's off the bracelet, there are no sharp edges anymore. So it is just a really amazing wearing case, comfortable on wrists, and uh, not much bad to say about it, really. Moving on to the sacrilegious leather on diver situation, we have this beautiful brown distress strap from Vario, which I think pairs perfectly with the blue and uh, is a really nice, soft, supple strap that if you're gonna put on a thinner diver, classes it up. It's good in my opinion, beautiful color tones, makes it very rich feeling. Uh, and yeah, I, I dig this combo a lot. If you wanna take a little advantage of the thinness of the watch, we can put it on a single pass NATO strap, uh, like this crown and buckle chevron strap, and really doesn't add much height to it and gives it a cool casual look. Sports the watch up a little bit, still have some fun because of that colorful combo. Again, doesn't rise up off the wrist at all. So definitely can take one pass straps, no problem. Next, another Chevron strap from Crown & Buckle. I think this is just a gorgeous combo. This beautiful light blue, whitish to weave tone uh, just plays off the blue, darker blue of the dial so well. Adds a little bit of fun, but not too much. Uh, and yeah, it's just a really comfortable strap, so good combo. To me, I love this combo almost as much as the Archer Silicone. The Silicone beating it out just by a bit because it's more comfortable slightly. Uh, but this is a beautiful way to add a little bit of a pop of color but while still having that kind of tone on tone match. So check this strap out. It's not too expensive. Again, one pass strap, no issue on this watch. And yeah, size is just great. Having a little bit of fun with this bubblegum pink strap, also done in silicone by HNS Straps. I've got this off of Amazon, but I don't believe they sell on Amazon anymore. I don't know if this strap is actually exactly available anymore, but I just like the combo. So find a bubblegum pink strap somewhere and put it on this watch and it'll look fun. And there we have it. A surprisingly versatile dive watch, a very tooltastic first impression, but can almost be dressier leaning because of the fun color and the smaller size and the thinness of it. So 
surprisingly versatile, really well made. And yeah, this is just a pretty nice watch. Taking a look at the loom here, they didn't do a bad job. It's obviously very nice if they got the loom in the bezel, the loom on all the hands and indices. And thankfully, which I don't see with many watches, uh, at least at this price point, all the tones of the loom match pretty well color-wise and uh, application amount-wise. So it's a really nice touch to see. It's just there isn't a lot of application or the loom itself isn't very bright. Uh, so it's, it just sucks because it could be much better. It is a potential loom torch. It just doesn't have that depth to it. So while it does glow, which is, you know, very faintly, uh, it's legible, but it doesn't last too long. Relooming and comparing to the Timex here, you can see they have a similar glow, a similar tone. Uh, again, you have that classic BGW9 leaning blue that's also seen in the kind of Indiglo signature. They did a good job on the loom in theory. They just need to add a couple more layers and it would be a really, really nicely loomed watch. So pros and cons of this watch here, and to me, one of the biggest pros is just the size of it, of course. We have a 39 millimeter Pelagos in a sense, and it's not a Pelagos that's dumbed down like the current Pelagos 39. It keeps the uh, dimension that that Pelagos has. It keeps the, what, the way that the loom plots flow into that little like re-hot chapter ring marker situation and executes it really well. It makes it thinner than the traditional Pelagos still has good water resistance. It's it's a really nicely sized watch and it's kind of almost, in a sense, the Pelagos and the Black Bay 39 Killer and it, it fits amazingly. Another big pro for this watch in particular for me is the dial quality. You have a beautiful dial on this watch, obviously not a dial of their own design, but they did it to a really good standard. The loom plots are really well done. The actual shape, the quality, the actual base dial texture, the printing, it is all executed surprisingly well here, especially considering this price point. So I can't really knock the execution. Another big pro for this watch for me is the fact that you have that micro adjust in the bracelet, that on the fly kind of system. It's cool to see a lot of brands still don't even do it. It's a very, pretty, I, in my opinion, good execution of that system. It's something that arguably, if you want to finagle with it a little bit, you can even use it without taking the watch off, which is nice. And lastly, I think my biggest pro for this watch is the price point. This comes in at, I think the full technical retail price is $238, which to me is insane value. It almost blows my mind that this watch is available at this price. I can't think of anything at that price point that really directly competes with this. We're talking about like an Orient Mako or, you know, like the new 5KX from Seiko, which this doesn't really compare apples to apples with, in my opinion. This does feel better executed. This feels like a better design, which of course, again, it's not its original design, but it's executing that design to a standard that I wouldn't expect for this price point. It is very surprising and really well done. Now, moving on to cons, and one of the biggest cons for me is arguably the fit of the watch. Now the size is great, but because they use the exact same link uh, size for the bracelet and the fact that at least for me, I can't get the perfect setting on the micro adjust. It just seems like there should be slightly more uh, settings. I can't get the bracelet to wear the way I usually like to. Typically I would wear my watch a little bit looser than I have this watch set. Uh, it's a little bit on the tighter side, but when I put an extra link in, but put the micro just all the way in, it's too loose. So it's, it's one of those ones where I'm like weirdly in between, uh, but your mileage may vary. It might be perfect. Uh, it's just unfortunate because I'm not quite able to use the micro just how it's intended. I can't just take my watch off throughout the day and you know adjust it looser, adjust it tighter, depending on how the weather gets. I just am kind of stuck in this state of, this is the setting that fits me and there aren't really no other options. One thing I will also note is, again, this is a 200 give or take dollar watch, so the machining isn't perfect perfect. It was amazingly done and presents nicely on wrist, but it's one of those things where partially on the clasp, partially on the links, it can be a little sharp at times, and especially since I wear this tighter than I normally have to, it, it can hurt a little bit on wrist in a sense. Obviously, it's not as flexible as a Jubilee type bracelet or something with more links in the bracelet style, but even then there could be a little bit more rounding. There could just be a little bit more softness uh, along with the case design, a little bit more, uh, you know, refinement. But at this price point, it's not something I can super hone in on and super focus on. I think it's well done for the price, but it could be done better. And I would absolutely pay more to have those tiny little quality of life adjustments. A small con I'll mention is the fact that it, <laughs> this is a kind of knockoff watch in a sense. Of course, it doesn't say Tudor on it, which, <laughs> 
thankfully it doesn't, uh, but it is basically a one-to-one -one copy of the Tudor Pelagos. To be fair, they don't make a variation like this in 39 millimeters, and that's kind of where I think Tudor has gone wrong. They've, in a sense, neutered what was really cool, in my opinion, about the regular Pelagos. But with that being said, it can get full credit for being so amazing because, it, you know, they stole the design a little bit. Uh, but they do it at such a di drastically different price point and in a variation that doesn't exist. So, I mean, there, there's points there, in my opinion. So final thoughts on this watch, and I'm, in a sense, blown away. This is probably one of the most surprised experiences I've had with a watch at any price point um, and kind of the value and quality you're getting from it. Am I giving too much praise to this watch? Maybe, but I've always been a huge fan of the Plagos aesthetically. It's just never perfectly worked for me. I've owned the 42 millimeter Plagos four or five times at this point in both colors, and it just never really clicked. I love the watch, I love the design. I've gotten over the bulkiness at points, you know, I've, I've, I've convinced myself to love it at many, many different points in my life. But I would just prefer it a touch smaller. I don't mind the size it's at, but I do prefer how this 39 millimeter case wears. And although they now make the 39 millimeter Pelagos, it's not the same. They went with the sunburst dial. They went with the sunburst bezel, if I remember correctly. They do uh, the same, you know, square indices, but they've neutered it. They don't have that area where the indices slot into and add more depth to the wash. It just, it doesn't feel the same to me and it's not as good looking to me in my opinion. So it's one of those things where this takes everything that was good about the 42 millimeter Pelagos and brings it to us at 39 millimeters. It brings us the watch in steel, which the Pelagos doesn't exist in. Uh, so this is doing things that Tudor isn't. And honestly, I think Tudor should. It's making the Pelagos that I think should exist. And in my opinion, I would take this any day over the standard Pelagos. I know the movement on the Pelagos is better. Uh, the finishing, maybe marginally better. Of course, you get titanium, which is you know cooler, but it's great too. So it doesn't hold up fantastically well. It's one of those things where you have to kind of battle with yourself and do you like the watch for the watch? Do you like the watch for originality? Do you like the watch for the brand name? Uh, or do you just like a good well-built watch? Maybe this movement isn't serviceable years down the line and you know what, I'm okay with that. I'll, <laughs> I'll buy another one if it still exists because it's $200, it's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but I, I am really surprised by how well this package come together, how well executed is the fact that it has micro adjust that actually doesn't feel janky it doesn't feel cheap it doesn't feel uh undeserving of the watch design in a sense which is really surprising to me it's so well executed it's finished amazingly uh and i don't quite understand how they get it to this price point which you know buy one for yourself and, and find out for yourself i'm i think you'll be surprised as well anyway that's enough of my rambling i thoroughly enjoyed this watch let me know what your thoughts are down below. Let me know if you <laughs> if you hate the fact that I enjoy this watch so much. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you as always for watching this video. I appreciate you. Uh, hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.